So let's take some time and chat about the importance of validating our web pages. So one of the questions I asked you to ask yourself this week was, have you validated each page by running it through the W3C markup validation service? Um, perhaps you might be either going there to do it, or perhaps you were going and using some of the browser tools that we discussed um, a couple weeks ago, because uh, those tools can kind of help you validate your pages within the browser. But let's talk specifically about validating our pages and the importance of doing so. So let's go ahead and go to the W3C Markup Validation Service. It's just validator.w3.org. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to validate um, one of my pages, uh, the page that we used to make um, an image map previously in the course, and I'm going to validate it here within the validation service and see what if I get any errors. And this is a common workflow that you should be now going through now that you're actually drafting out pages of your term project. Don't wait to the end to validate. Go ahead and try to validate as you go along because it'll help you uh, fix errors as they come up. And because sometimes within the validation service you'll notice that um, it's not always exact exactly for where the error uh, is occurring. So it helps if you're kind of you know validating as like uh, uh, as you go along the way, so you know it'll help you better figure out. Okay, I just finished this chunk, then the error must be within there, um, because sometimes errors can cause other errors down the road. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, and then another thing uh, I talk about here in our page is scroll down here to the bottom. Why validate? This just gives you a brief history of why we even have a validator and the reasons for doing for doing it. Um, I highly suggest going through and taking a look at that. But let's go ahead and validate by file upload. Once we get our pages on LabWebs, we can actually validate by giving it a link on LabWebs. Um, but for our purposes today, we're just going to validate by file upload. And this is also a way that I'm going to, I, I validated your, um, what's it called, your midterms. And I'm also going to be doing the same for your finals and for your term projects that you submit to me. So I'm going to hit browse and then I navigate my computer to where the file is and I'm going to try to validate the about page. So I'm going to click on the about page within my root folder and I'm going to hit open and then it now pastes it here within within the um, browser upload box area and then I'm going to hit check. And then sometimes you might get an error uh, that's just because it could be because my browser but let me try to run through it again hit check and I bet you it'll work this time. See it just really just depends and this document um, passed. Now sometimes I might have errors. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to validate another page. To validate another page I find it easier just to back up and rebrowse. Now I'm going to browse for my index page. That was the first page that I made on my site. I'm going to hit open and I'm going to hit check. And as you notice, wow, 14 errors and 13 warnings. Let's scroll down and kind of see what this is telling us. So here um, one of the helpful things is it'll tell you the line and the column. So it tells me here the element name above was found and context was not allowed. So basically, sometimes these descriptions down here are very helpful, but sometimes they're a little co they're a little um, heady. So I find it easier just to look at the line, and the column doesn't really help us because uh, our um, within Notepad plus plus we're not using the integrated development environment that would give us columns. So Let's just look at the line because all of our stuff in Notepad plus plus is line. So I go and then this also tells me now this gives me a a cue here um, that position error was detected. So you notice how my my cursor has this little question mark. I'm in Firefox and it has this functionality. So I'm going to go back and look at my code where this problem might ha where this problem is and see if that'll give me a cue. Excuse me on what I need to fix. So here is that page. And right here, I noticed that up. Oh, I forgot to put my I had to officially close my title, my title element. So I'm gonna hit save, and now I'm gonna go back to no uh, back to the validator, and I'm gonna validate again. And now notice my errors has gone down. So let's come down here and check the next one, and it says uh, line 42, and it looks like. Um, See, it tells me here that the error is here, but what I can tell from this is it looks like I didn't close my uh, quotations here. So now I can go back to my code, find line 32. Wait, is that what it said? Did it say line 32? Uh, line 42. Go to line 42. 42. Yep, there it is. One of the things I love about Notepad is the color coding. So that should have been a cue to me earlier that this was all purple. 
So now that I've closed that and save it, I can come up here and back up and validate it. And try to validate it again. Getting an error for some reason. Let's see if it'll work. So I finally got it to go through. For some reason, I've been getting errors here recently with the W3C validation service. And sometimes it helps to just clear your cache or uh, go back in or try different browsers. So now I have two errors. Let's scroll down and see what those are. It says the end tag for the P was omitted, line 49. So let's go to line 49. Well, line 49, I don't see what it's talking about with the P, but if I look up here in line 48, I notice that my P, my paragraph is not closed. So I'm going to close that. Hit save. Going to back up. Hit check again. Another error. Come on. This is frustrating sometimes. Hit check. Another error. Any day now. I think it actually does do better with the errors if you're if you're checking for uh, validating if it's on the web. It just has to do with a bug with the file upload. So now we have uh, one final error. This is the end tag for the body was omitted. So let's look at line 51. Let's go to line 51, 51. And you realize, oh, I didn't have my ending body element. Now that I fix that, back up. We're probably going to get an error, but you never know. Hit check. And guess what? No errors in our document passed. That's great. So this is just a, you know, a reminder to help us um, make sure that our pages are consistent. That's what the validator service helps us do, and it helps us um, you know, ensure that our pages are developed with the best standards in mind to make sure that they you know, are perhaps more functional uh, for responsive web design in terms of mobile devices and other things, and updating browsers in the future. And stuff like that. If we didn't have some someone or something like the validation service to govern the web, then we potentially would have just lots and lots and lots of different types of rules for code, and then it would be difficult for um, one browser to be able to view everybody's code and stuff like that. So that's why it's all standardized, and it's also also forced us to make sure that we keep our code code clean and simple, and make sure that we are writing everything correctly. So. You know, not closing elements is something common that people get errors for in this class, forgetting to do a quotation, um, or mixing up and putting, I've seen lots of times where they'll start putting content perhaps above the, the style area or above the head or having lots of other content in the head when it needs to be all within the body. You know, those are just some of the things to watch out for. Um, so enjoy uh, validating your pages with the um, validator. And because that's what I do whenever I grade your homework and stuff like that too as well. But um, I just wanted to go ahead and go through that. Another thing to realize is that within the web development lifecycle, just because now we're getting to validation doesn't mean that you have to go wait until the end of uh, uh, of because it's not necessarily sequential. You don't get to validation necessarily at the very end. It's kind of a more of a cyclical process that would allow it to happen at any stage in the game. Um, so, anyways, enjoy validating and let the class or I know if you have any questions. Have a good day.